Hello and welcome back to our channel, Tech Expert Tutorials. In this video, we will show you how to upgrade a MySQL database server on Windows and Workbench, a visual tool for interacting with your database. We will cover everything you need to know in order to upgrade your MySQL database successfully without losing data. We will show you how to download and install a new version of MySQL. We will be using a .msi install file, which automates most of the settings. See our other video for some other reasons to choose MySQL over SQL Server or Oracle, along with some other important topics. We will also cover some common issues and how to fix them along the way. Okay, let's get started. First, we will log into the workbench and back up our databases to disk. If this database was in production, you would want to schedule this backup to run hourly or daily, depending on your needs. For this demo, we will do this manually. Click on Data Export on the left menu pane. You can select the databases you will back up. In our case, we only created one named MyDB. The Sys database contains information used for performance tuning and diagnostics, so you may want to select Sys here. Usually, you will also select the checkboxes for other objects to export below, such as stored procs, events, and triggers. We like to include this Create Schema option in case we need to build this from scratch, such as moving our database to another server. You can choose to simply dump to one file or to several files within a folder for more flexibility. Here, you can choose dump the data only or structure only or both. We select to include both. You can also change the export or backup location. In production, it is usually better to backup to a network drive in case of a bad local disk or other major problems. We get a warning which is pretty common about version incompatibility. This can cause issues in the backup, so it is best to take care of this now. We open Preferences, then Administration, then Update the Paths to a new version. To find other installed versions, we open a bash shell and run a command called find. This will find the location of the MySQL dump and MySQL applications. We didn't find anything in the first run, so we changed to the root directory and run again. This time we found a few occurrences of the application. If you didn't find other versions, you would have to install those yourself. We can check the versions for these using this command with a dash uppercase V. One is version 5711, which is the one we want based on the warning. Copy this path and paste it into the first path entry or you can browse here using the three ellipses on the right. You can also do the same for the MySQL tool. The problem is that there were two different versions of the same tool and Workbench was pointing to the wrong one. Now we can start export again. It still fails. We will try to restart the Workbench to get these settings to be applied. So we'll start up the Workbench again and connect. Go to Data Export and make the same selection. Then click on Start Export. So this time it worked. You can see the path to the MySQL dump application is pointing to the correct location now. By the way, this window shows you the commands that were ran. You can also run these commands from a DOS shell prompt instead. Here are the two backup files that were created. We will open them in Notepad. You can see they contain SQL statements. Okay, everything looks okay so far. We can shut down and restart the service from the service application. To upgrade our version to a newer version, we go back to the MSI Archive website, then find our new version, which will be 5744. This is the most recent patch for version 57. We aren't ready to upgrade to 8 yet, as there are a lot of major changes that may break our applications that are using this database. We download the larger or full version again to avoid the issues we had earlier. Once it finishes downloading, we run the installation. A window will pop up asking to apply an upgrade for product catalog updates. Select Yes. When the installer starts, click on Next. If this only shows that we are upgrading Workbench, we will need to click the Add button to include the server upgrade, and then add the MySQL server to the upgrade list. Expand the items and select the 64-bit version, then click the right arrow again to add this to the list on the right. Then click Next. There is a warning about a conflict in the data directory path. We want to check this out before continuing. 
There are files from the current version still in this folder. In our case, we can make a backup of the directory, but since we already made a backup of this data, we can install it into the same folder. This is because we are just upgrading from one MITRE version to another MITRE version. But if we were upgrading to version 8 or newer, we would select or create a different directory here and then run a restore from our backup. Later, we will show you how to restore the database if you selected a different directory here. Click Next and then Execute. Once the installation is complete, click on Next. We will be configuring the new database and selecting the same settings as before. Development computer, TCP IP, and port, and open firewall for this application. Select Advanced and then click Next. Type in the current password for the root account. This account was carried over to the new version. We configure a new Windows service. We are giving the service a new name. We could leave it the same as before, but we like to know what version we are running, so we change the name here. We want to run this at startup using the system account. Here we can set some permissions. For this demo, we are selecting the grant full access option. Click next and set up the logging options here. We aren't covering the advanced options today. We leave the default settings and click next. Click execute and wait for these steps to finish. There is a log tab that can help debug any issues during this upgrade. In our case, there are no issues. The configuration was successful. Workbench version 636 is currently installed. We restart and try to connect, either using the current connection or creating a new one. Here is how we create a new connection. We choose a name, fill out localhost for a host name, and use the root account. When testing our connection, we get this SSL protocol version mismatch error. The root cause is that our workbench version does not work well with our database version. The version that does work with 5744 is Workbench 6.3.4. We download this version from this URL 64-bit MSI file. Then we run the install. We can change the location of this application. We choose the default. Click Next, then click Install. When it's finished, select the Launch Workbench and click Finish. This time, we can connect to our database successfully with no errors. If you selected a new folder for the data directory, you will need to restore the database from the backup we created earlier. Otherwise, this next step is optional. We start up the workbench in case it was closed earlier. Then we connect to the server. Select Data, Import, Restore. Then we look for the restore point that we want to use. Select the folder and database we want to restore. In this dump folder, we only save the MyDB database. In another dump folder, we included the sys database in our backup. Go back to the first folder as we were only going to restore the MyDB database this time. Click on Start Import and wait. This should be quick since there is very little data on our backup. This is taking a while. Something must be wrong. To troubleshoot this, click on Stop and verify the database was not created. Try to run the command in the window in a command prompt in administrator mode. We see an error with the configuration file. This file does not exist. To find the correct config file, open the services application and check the properties of the MySQL service. This is the correct location for the config file. If you want, you can verify this by browsing to this folder and file. In the command line, replace the default file entry with this path and file and rerun the command. Also, this time we put the dash u and dash p settings in the wrong location of the command. They should come at the end. Remove the dash database entry as it is also causing errors. The restore should get this name from within the backup files. Run this again. That was very quick and no errors this time. Now we run the restore command for the store procedure we also backed up earlier. This also was quick. So now we go back to the workbench, refresh our list of schemas, and we can see the MyDB database and store procedure entries now, along with the data. So we found a few bugs in the installation of this version of the workbench. Luckily, we were able to find some workarounds for now. If you are not going to run this in production or automate this, you would run this from the command line, not the workbench. 
We can test some other items in the new version with our SQL statements we used before. Looks like we can see the databases we created earlier. Okay, looks like everything is working fine with no more issues from our install and upgrade. Well, that's all we have for today. Stay tuned for more videos on advanced topics with MySQL. As always, comments and suggestions are welcome. See you next time.